Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lola Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Press this, and you can see this, hear this, taste this, and experience this. Press the green button at Ireland.com. Hello and welcome to the show. This week we'll be meeting Britain's oldest carer, Mary Houghton. She recently celebrated her 90th birthday. But first, we're off to meet Anthony and John Kennedy, whose dad, Paddy Kennedy, came from Dublin. He played for Manchester United. He was a Busby babe. He also played for Blackburn Rovers, Southampton and Oldham Athletic. Paddy sadly passed away in 2007, but his two sons, John and Anthony, have some lovely stories to tell about their dad. He was from Dublin, um, and obviously his dad uh, ran teams around Dublin. His uh, oldest brother uh, played in the cup final. My dad was the youngest, and um, he ended up doing really well. He, um, he was Irish schools boys captain, and um, they beat um, England famously at Goodison Park in front of 40,000 people, I believe. And um, and that's when he was first spotted, when uh, Samat Busby had started the Busby Babes in 1953. And uh, he was he was scouring Britain and Ireland for the best young talent. And my dad was considered the best young talent in Ireland because he was Irish schoolboy's captain and they just beat England in front of 40,000 people. So that was the start of him coming to Manchester. He was around 15 when he first came to Manchester United, yeah. And he was, he'd played, as Anthony said, he played against England at um, Goodison Park, and they they won, never done before or since. They beat England eight yeah. three. And he was he was scout. He went back to Ireland. His pe one of his parents had died when he was ten, and one of them was eleven. So his sister made his eldest sister. He was the youngest of five. She made all the decisions, and she said he can he can come over, but on the proviso that he studied something just in case he didn't make it so they, they sent him to be an electrician and in the evenings he trained at the cliff in uh, in Salford that's where they trained back then and him and another guy I think it was uh, Hamilton 
they, Tommy Hamilton, he, they were the first two Irishmen, Irish boys, as 15-year-olds to come to British clubs. Oh, 1953, it was a special year for my dad and any Manchester United fan. Um, yeah, it was, the, it was the inaugural Youth Cup 1953, and they, and they won, and not only did they win, all of those players, all 11, managed to make the first team. So it was a very special year, very special year for football, very special year for all them people involved, yeah. The Munich Air disaster, a very, very sad time for all the families, all Manchester United fans, and of course, your dad was involved around about that time. He was, he'd left the year before, um, he didn't have to go. Uh, the famous Johnny Carey um, was Blackburn's manager and he made an offer for my dad. So my dad was understudy to the great Roger Byrne who died in the Munich air crash. His mate um, Sandy Busby was at Blackburn with him. Matt used to drive him there sometimes. I think it was, um, it was one week when um, Matt had to go to Munich, obviously, and he's, he's coming back with Sandy. And sa my dad said to Sandy, look, the placard, Munich air crash. And uh, my dad went back to the house with Sandy and helped with arrangements for them to go to Munich. Um, but it was really sad for my dad because his best pal, Liam, Billy Whelan, I think they've got um, a bridge named after Billy in Dublin. Yeah. But um, that was my dad's real close pal. They would Every six weeks, my dad said we'd flip back to Dublin. And um, yeah, and he was a tremendous player. You know, and to be with them like guys for five years, five, six years or whatever it was, um, you know, he was absolutely devastated going to all the funerals, so yeah, it was really sad for him. Roger Byrne was uh, England captain and United captain and five years old than my dad, so he didn't see a path as a regular first teamer in that great team. He was 12 man his last three games and he knew that um, he was wanted at Blackburn. So Johnny Kerrod said, if you come here, you're in the first team straight away and you'll be playing for Ireland because he was manager of Ireland at the same time. He went made his debut there at Blackburn against Barnsley, got man of the match, so Matt Busby went to see him. He used to travel, as Anthony said, with uh, Sandy. And Matt said to him at the end of the game, even though he got man of the match, he said, you're not John Charles yet, who was going great guns in Italy. He was like, you know, a famous player for Juventus. Um, but yeah, he was down to play the former Yugoslavia um, after his third or fourth game. Then he got a very bad injury that kept him out for two years and that he lost a yard of pace from that. My dad played left back, but an untold story is he was blind in one eye, my dad. It, and that's, he was right footed, but played left back. And he never told anyone, you know, to be blind. I mean, how can you play football? But he said he'd just catch him on the turn. Well, my mum, she, um, she came over and she actually, she worked as a priest's housekeeper at 16. She came from Knockrow, Boyle in County Roscommon, uh, from a little small holding there. And her brother was already over here, her elder brother John, staying with an old Irish family. And he, he said, I've got you a job at the local church, English Martyrs Church. So she was the priest's housekeeper, but you didn't get much time off. So the old landlady, Mrs O'Shea, said, you know, you're not getting a chance to go. There was lots of Irish dances going in England then, in, in Manchester, and there was coaches going every week to them all over the northwest. So she got a job in, I think it was Kellogg's, and uh, so that... But actually, how they met was she was at there was some presentation night at Kellogg's, and my my mom was brunette, beautiful looking woman, big brown eyes. She was with her fiery red headed sister Kathleen, and they were sat having a drink at this presentation night with the company, and Manchester United had been asked to send someone as a representative to I think pre present a trophy, yeah. and my dad turned up with his friend, and they looked over and they seen the brunette and the redhead. And he said, I, I like the look of the, the brunette, and it went from there. They had four children, me being the youngest, John. Anthony stood next to me, he's uh, four years older. Then there's Anne, who now lives in Wales, and Anne's eight years older. And sadly, Teresa, who's 12 years older, passed away around eight or nine months ago now. I noticed a book uh, written uh, about Duncan Edwards, and your dad is featured in quite a lot of those books. He said Duncan was the best ever. He said he... Well, he thought he'd, you know, he'd captained England in the 66 World Cup, no doubt about it. And he said the power of the man, you know, it's skill, he had pace, he had everything. So, he's, yeah, he's the best player he'd ever seen and played, played with. He played with Bobby Charlton, you know, he played with some great players and against, he, he actually played against John Charles in a reserve game. Um, and my dad really revered him. He said he, 
In fact, my dad said he pulled out of a challenge with him one time. He was playing against him and John Charles come in with his head and my dad went to, he said I could have took his head off and I pulled pulled out and John Charles come back and said, well done, son, to him. He says, I couldn't, anyone else had I've gone followed through, but I couldn't do it on the great John Charles. And your son, Kieran, is a great footballer and has had a good career as well. Yeah. It all started when uh, my dad used to come babysitting and he, he kicked me out to babysit. He'd never babysit for us, would he? No. But uh, he just, yeah, I think he's seen something of himself in my son and... Um, He'd, he'd be playing football with him in the hallway and, um, you know, and he'd be showing him all these tricks, you know, he'd be only two, three, four, and um, he followed him everywhere and, and told me dad's health got bad. But, um, yeah, Kieran was at, he got scouted at Man City uh, at junior age, at six-year-old, and then got to nine-year-old and um, they took him on, like, as an apprentice there. So he stayed at Man City till he was about 19 and he played with the likes of Harry Kane, or Jack Butland, uh, the list is endless. And the pl he went all over the world playing against all these famous Real Madrid players and Bayern Munich players that you see today. But then he gets a real serious injury, which, um, you know, it took a lot out of him. Um, just a bit like my dad, unlucky with injuries. He was flying up until he was about 21. Well, my dad did a speech for our local team and he, you know, he's tried to compare yesterday to sort of today's football. and. Um, just look at that pitch George Best is playing on. You know, it's full of sand and mud and I think I've got another one in play. They're playing on snow, you know, but with that big heavy ball as well. And uh, But even the training, you know, they said to the trainer, oh, do you know, they, they kind of ran out, out of training ideas. It was a bit, a bit of a lull in the training. He said, do you mind, boss, if we go for a run around, you know, around Trafford Park? But then we just ran to one of the, the players' houses, got the cards and the cigarettes out and... Um, you know, cups of tea and uh, stayed for about an hour. And then they, they said, oh, oh, we better go back to the stadium now uh, where, where the training, where the trainer is. And after about 100 yards from the stadium, they put a sprint on, get a sweat on, and you go, oh, well done, lads. John, tell me about this famous telegram. Well, Martin, what happened when my dad made his debut with Ian Greaves at um, Wolves, the Mighty Wolves, in 1954, he was aged 19, they call him Billy Whelan, but actually Liam Whelan, the famous Liam Whelan from Dublin who died in the Munich crash, and uh, Tommy Hamilton, another player who played, who was Irish, but didn't quite make it. They sent my dad and uh, Ian Greaves this telegram to congratulate them on the debut against Wolves. Uh, Samat had just passed, and um, Sandy said, Paddy, my dad's jacket, do you want it? He's only wore it a few times, and... Um, so anyway, my dad's birthday was a few weeks later and uh, he turned up uh, with that jacket. But uh, we've got pictures of Samat and Alex Ferguson with a double trophy and um, you know, we got we put it in a frame and everything. So yeah, we're really honoured to have Samat Busby's jacket over there with lots of pictures of him wearing it as well. You know, like uh, holding the trophies with Sir Alex Ferguson and Samat's holding it as well. I know that you're both born here, but Irish at heart. Oh yes, when we grew up, I, I grew up in, I was born in 1970 and uh, around where I lived there was, it was all Irish families, all the, the Catholic school I went to, it was all Irish descent kids and we went to the Irish clubs, Irish pubs, played Gaelic football, you know, lots of kids were doing the Irish dance, we, we felt Irish, we're here and we'd go over to Ireland in the summer We'd be talking to the Irish kids, and they call us the English kids. <laughs> <laughs> and we're thinking, Who, which English kids? We're Irish, you know. Um, so we're very, very proud of that, yeah. Anthony, it's been lovely to be here at your home tonight. You've got so much memorabilia here to remember your dad. So many photos. We could stay here for a week. Yeah, There's yeah. so much stuff, so many photographs. Lots of stories we could tell you as well, you know, because we've got Southampton stories as well. So, um, but yeah, we could go on forever, so... <laughs> Thank you both for joining us. Thank you, Martin. It's been my pleasure. Uh, and my honour, yeah. It was lovely to meet John and Anthony Kennedy and hear the lovely stories they've got to tell about their dad, Paddy Kennedy, who sadly passed away. May he rest in peace. Now we're going to take a little break. On our return, we'll be meeting Mary Horton, who is Britain's oldest carer.
Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lollavita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Redditch, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Press this, and you can see this, hear this, taste this, and experience this. Press the green button at Ireland.com. Welcome back. Now we're off to meet Mary Horton, who recently celebrated her 90th birthday. Mary hailed from Ackle in County Mayo and immigrated to Southport when she was only 16. She's been working at the Tudor Bank nursing home for the last 30 years and we went along to meet her. Mary, tell me a little bit about growing up in Ackle. Well, I went to the National School uh, when I was four, I believe, so my mother told me, she sent me at four, and I was very good. So they kept me, the, usually it's five, but because my dad worked away, she was on her own, so she wanted to work on, she had a small holding, and she worked, and you know, she had nobody, only herself to do it. Yeah. So she worked very hard. Now, you immigrated at a very young age. Tell me about that and tell me why you left home. I left home because there was no work. And um, all the villages around me, most of them came over to England to work in the hospitals because you got accommodation there. And we got to the stage then that we loved Woolworths. We loved Woolworths because you could go pick up your things and just go to the counter and pay for it. You didn't have to open your mouth because once they heard the Irish accent, that was it. So, but we sort of worked, worked it out that they had respect for us in the end because we worked hard and they couldn't do anything else but respect us because, you know, and we were, we're great mates now. I, I love the English and I love, I married an Englishman, my children are English and, yeah, I was 16. You couldn't join nursing, you couldn't, not that I could afford it. If we were under 18, it was cadets and they didn't get paid, but we couldn't afford that. We had to get paid, so we went domestic 
first. And I think I'd done 12 months domestic uh, in the nurse's home, looking after the nurses that were off duty. And then I thought, and this is not what I want. I want to look after people that needs looking after. I don't want to wait on people that, okay. So I got a job as the ward orderly. It was in them days, which was um, cleaning up on the wards and doing flowers and that sort of thing. Yeah. And then I didn't like that much because I, well, I still wanted to do caring. I wanted to care for them. So I got a job as a nursing, or nursing auxiliary. That was it. I was made. So that's how I started. And I loved the job. I absolutely loved the job. And where I am now, our nursing home, well, I say it's special. I think it is. It's a team and everybody is happy. And if you get a happy team, you've got nice working conditions and the residents are lovely. And even the, the relatives, they come in and they leave their mother or father or husband or whatever it is with us. We all know each other. They come in and they're frightened. They're lost. And then the relatives walk out and they think, oh, they've, they've abandoned us. So it's up to us to get them. We try and get their trust. And once you've got their trust, I think you're, you're well away. Now, Mary Horton, of course, she retired 30 years ago and she's come to work with you guys and she's been here ever since. Oh my God, uh, uh, what I want to say. Uh, when, when I joined to Tudor Bank in 2005, because I'm actually from India, I'm a registered nurse in India, then I converted my uh, PIN number to, to UK. Uh, I did my adaptation. When I came to UK, um, uh, Mary Horton was already works there. And uh, what I'll say, you know, she, because as I'm a newcomer, she really looked after me. I learned a lot of experience from her. You know, when I see her work ethics, her spirit, her, you know, her uh, that active energy, that active ener energy, it's, it's inspiring. It is, it is inspiring, you know, it's every day. Uh, it is inspiring. And as I, yes, I am a, a manager now at the minute in, uh, in Tudor Bank now. And even I will say, she's, she was my mentor in the beginning, even now, you know, I'll say, because she's worth of experience. She had that much of experience about the care. Yeah. Now, you retired at the age of 60. <laughs> Why did you go back working at the Tudor Bank Nursing Home? Because I didn't like being at home. My sons were married. I'm one of them people that I have to do something. I have to feel wanted in some way. So I thought, I'll go to the nursing home. And 30 years later, you're still caring for people. You're I still walking in the nursing yeah. home. Yeah. And if you, I've been in this morning, and you go in, you say, hello, and smile at their face. I always say, or I, uh, as a manager, I seen even her, even her presence will make the difference in the resident's uh, approach. Even when they are sometimes very agitated or, uh, or uh, restless, when Mary's presence will make them too happy and cheerful. You know, uh, that kind of technique, uh, because that's, that's the worth of experience, as I said. The worth of experience she's presenting there in the, in, 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 with my residents. What inspires you to keep you going, to get you up in the morning, get you out for work and you go in and you care for people? Maybe some of them are younger than you, some of them are older than you. How, how do you manage all that? Well, I, I feel, they feel that I'm one of them. So I get on with them really great because they say, oh, honey, come and tell me this all, you know. Because I'm old and they think I'm one of them, that's fine. And now you don't wear the uniform because the uniform means authority yeah. to them. So they think that I'm just one of them. We are like a family, yeah, my staff, my residents. When somebody admitted to into Tudor Bank, they are part of our family. Any new staff come to Tudor Bank to work, they are part of our family. We work as a close family. 
Now, for families at home watching the programme tonight would like to come and see you and Mary and maybe get their mum or their dad or the loved one into your uh, care home, how can they do that? Anybody can come and, and see and look at me and see Mary, how she works, how the care home works. They can always welcome to uh, and, uh, and watch it, uh, come and see it through the bank. Yeah. I'm originally from a Catholic uh, Catholic family, and I still follows uh, still follows that, uh, that my, my faith because uh, if I didn't go to a church in one Sunday, my still my family will ask you be in the church. My mom, mom and dad will ask you be you going to the church this morning or not. You know, it's, that was my that's the way I grew up <laughs> in in my from my childhood, and we'll still follow that. You know, if I get an opportunity, and if I get an opportunity. If I'm free, I will take my full family. You know, we go to the nearest church uh, in Southport. Yes, we have, yeah. yeah. Now, you received two National Care Award Lifetime Achievements Awards. How do you feel about that? Very honoured, very honoured. Yeah, because yeah. I, never, I never expected it. But I always say I didn't achieve that. My workmates, we were all teams and we were all in it together not just me, it's, um, it was for the home. Have you been back to Ackle or do you intend to go back to Ackle? I'm going back in um, July. They're having a big wedding there. Um, my niece's daughter is getting married and there's 22 from Southport going back for the wedding. So I'm going with them. I've been lucky in every way, I don't know why, because I was lucky with my job. I always loved the people I worked with, always got on with them. And then I got married and I got the nicest man God put on earth. Yeah. They loved him in Ireland. Oh, they loved him. They didn't love me that much, but they loved him. My mother, my mother adored him and all my family, they loved him. And my sons, they're great. Yeah. Don't cause me any trouble, they're great. And their sons are great. So I've had no worries, really. I've got four step-grandchildren, uh, three granddaughters and one grandson. Are you going to continue on working, Mary? Well, as long as I'm fit and as long as the management will help me, yes. I think if you think old, you are old, but to me, age is just a number. Um, you can get somebody at 40 and they're 80, and you can get somebody at 80 and they think they're 40. So, you know, it's, um, not, I think we used to be working all the time, but in, all of a sudden you're sitting down, you no, no. no. Well done to you, Mary, and many congratulations on your wonderful Achievement Awards. You're an outstanding lady in the community and the wonderful care and attention you give to all the people at Tudor Bank Nursing Home. God bless you and I hope you continue to work there for a very long time. Now that's the end of the show for this week. We hope you'll come and join us next week again at Thursday evening, 7.30 with the Irish in the UK. Take care. Press the green button at Ireland.com.